But I'm thankful God moves in our midst. Amen. Y'all ready for the word this morning? No one. <laughs> hey, I know you are taking water. <laughs> Y'all ready for the word now? All right. Now we're, now we're ready. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, Sister Marlene. Right when I said that, she was drinking water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I planned on, on preaching something else uh, this morning, uh, but uh, I, I think I just want to save that for tonight. And uh, But uh, this message will help us this morning as well. Amen. But uh, remember tonight, 5 o'clock. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be preaching a message that will, if you're going through it, you, you don't want to miss this word tonight. But it, it will be a help and a strength. And uh, preaching tonight on, there's a song on the other side. Uh, talking about the children of uh, Israel when they were facing that Red Sea. But um, I'll tell you, remember tonight, 5 o'clock, I'm expecting a wonderful time in the Lord. I plan on preaching that this morning, but as, as things just progressed in the service, I just felt more led tonight uh, to preach on that word. But uh, Matthew, turn to Matthew, in Matthew chapter number 5, amen. Matthew chapter number 5, starting in verse number 13. Amen. I'm looking forward to that uh, couple's night. Amen. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. Matthew chapter number 5, starting in verse number 13. Oh, and one other announcement. My youngest, or my younger brother, Aaron, he will bring, be here next Sunday night, and uh, they're going to be preaching the word for us. Amen. Or to us. Amen. So, hallelujah. Remember that uh, announcement as well. Yesterday, Aaron came over and helped me. Or okay, I say helped me, but he did 99% of the work on the brakes. Uh, but he changed out all of our brake pads on our, our vehicle outside. And, and uh, I told Aaron, I said, um, I said, I said, um, I need to have you come and preach for us. And he said, you already have me scheduled to preach for you next Sunday night. I said, well, I'm glad you reminded me. <laughs> Amen. So uh, pastor needs to be a little better on his calendar. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But remember, next Sunday night is Aaron and Rachel will be here in uh, Othniel. Amen. And you will be blessed. Amen. Matthew chapter number five. If you're there, shout amen. 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 Matthew chapter five and starting in verse number 13. It says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost, lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. Say good for nothing. Good for nothing. Good for nothing. Don't say that to your neighbor. You just say that. Amen. <laughs> good for nothing. But to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, say my light. my light, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. With the help of the Holy Ghost today, I'd like to minister for a moment or two just upon the thought of contagious. Amen. Contagious. Say that. Contagious. Amen. Let's pray. Father, once again, Lord, I just come to you in desperate need of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I ask you, Lord, that it would not be me that speaks. Lord, may you speak through this vessel. Help me to deliver your word and demonstration and empower the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that we would be able to apply what we hear to our hearts. And Lord, I ask Lord that this would not be a message that comes in one ear and out the other. Lord, let this message find a lodging place in our heart. I pray, Lord, that this word would be a transforming word, Lord God. Lord, that your word would quicken us, Lord, and, and just uh, uh, make us alive, God. Transform us, Lord, through the power of the word of God today, Lord. Anoint me to preach. Anoint our ears to hear. 
our hearts to receive and our minds to comprehend. Let our minds not wander. We pray against the fowls of the air that would try to hinder this word from going forth. We ask you, Lord, that you'd anoint our teachers today. Anoint Sister Miranda, anoint Sister Mary, and anoint the children, the students to hear and to learn. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. Amen. Once again, Matthew 5. 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world, and a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are within the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Contagious. Amen. Contagious. Say, I'm contagious. I'm contagious. Amen. Say it. Come on now. I'm contagious. Amen. Amen. One thing that Sister Miranda can testify to the fact of is that if I have to sneeze, you better not be within 10 feet of where I am. Amen. That's just the way that it is. Sometimes we'll be driving down the road and it seems like I'm always, the sun's always just shining through my window. And I don't know about you, but if I look at the sun, it has a tendency of just making me sneeze. Anybody else like that? Amen. One person said, I've got a sneeze and I, it, it won't come out. I've got the answer. Look up at the sun and that sneeze will come right out. Amen. But uh, a lot of time we'll be driving down the road and, and a sneeze will come upon me. And all of a sudden, here I go, achoo. And Sister Miranda says it's like a mister has been turned on in our expedition and it, she gets a, a handkerchief or a napkin and she has to wipe her glasses off because of my mister that had just gone out of my nostrils. Amen. And uh, a lot of times Sister Miranda will say, I sure hope you are not contagious and I I'm glad that I was not inhaling when you sneezed. Amen. But I, I know it's a, a silly illustration and it's a true illustration of that. Well, but, uh, you know, when Miranda told, uh, said unto me, I hope you're not contagious, immediately the wheels begin to turn in this preacher's mind. Amen. And I thought, I can preach on being contagious. Amen. You know, every one of us in here is contagious. Amen. I said, every single one of us in here is contagious. You may say, well, I, I'm not sick, Brother William. I'm, I'm not saying that, but you are contagious. Can you say amen? I'm not saying that we need to walk into the church wearing those little masks that they wear over at the hospital or the, the doctor. I'm not saying that we need to uh, put on rubber gloves whenever we're going to pray for each other, lay hands on each other. I'm, I'm not talking about that, but I'm saying that we, we, we need to realize this morning that we are contagious and that other people are going to be affected whenever we get around them. Can you say amen? So with the help of the Lord today, I just want to preach on that thought of being contagious. Amen. Number one today, I want to tell you, and this is probably the most contagious thing about us, is our attitudes are extremely contagious. Amen. Our attitudes are extremely contagious. Amen. This one reason, this is one reason why we've got to be careful who we associate with because the attitudes in which we, or the people in which we hang around, those attitudes are going to begin to affect our character. Can you say amen? Now, I have a relative in whom I love with all of my heart. How many of you got good relatives? Amen. Thank the Lord for them. But I've got a good relative that's also a very good gossip. Amen. And if I get around this certain relative, it ain't no time at all before I start talking just like they do. I remember 
remember one time I went over to a gathering and there my relative was and I was hanging around them and they started talking about so and so and you know what I started doing? I joined right in. I started talking about so and so. Why? Because my relative's attitude, that gossiping attitude if you will, it was contagious. You say even to you preacher? Oh yeah, even to me. I'm not immune from catching other things. Amen. If you're not immune from catching other things, that's why we've got to be careful who we associate with and who we hang around. Amen. There are people that are contagious. We are contagious. And I want to affect people in a positive way. Can you say amen? Oh, you see, church, I've seen people in church get around bitter people. And sure enough, that bitterness rubs off on them. Why? Because that person was contagious. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 says this, let all bitterness, amen. I felt like I've had to preach this several times, but I just can't get it out of my system. Let all bitterness, say that, all bitterness, all bitterness, not, not even a little bit of seed of bitterness or a little root of bitterness can be allowed within our hearts and lives, but let all and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you amen how does your attitude affect other people think about that just ask yourself that question how does my to affect other people. Amen. Oh, when people get around you, do they become negative like you do? When they get around you, do they get aggravated like you do? When people get around you and I, do they become irritated like we do? If so, our attitude is contagious and we need to be delivered from that sickness. Can you say amen? You say, are you saying a bad attitude is a sickness? You better believe it. Amen. A bad attitude is contagious and it's a sickness and it can only be healed through the power of the gospel. Can you say amen? Some of us today need to go back to the cross and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my negativity. I'm sorry for my bad attitude. I'm sorry for running this mouth without a filter on it. Lord, deliver me from this sickness of a bad attitude. We are this past week I went over and I was mowing a customer's lawn and there is a, a, a woman she's probably I think she's uh, about 80 years old and her brother owned a her brother owned a rental house she rented this rental house from her brother well her brother died the wife took the house the brother's wife took the house and said I've got to sell the house so now this 80 year old woman that's lived in this house for 30 plus years is trying to move herself and trying to find a Another place to live. It's really a sad story. The woman's name is, is Joyce. How do I remember that? Sister Joyce. Amen. That just makes me not forget this lady's name. But oh, this woman's name is Joyce, and she's having to move right now. And just this past week, I, I saw her, and I love seeing her, but unfortunately, every time I see her, she wants to talk for two hours. Amen. I'm thinking, I wish I could call somebody from the church for an emergency. Amen. Well, Joyce will come up to me Oh, we're talking and sometimes I'll pray with her and this and that just the sweetest uh, old lady that you would ever met oh but uh, I, this past week I went over there and she was just saying I really appreciate all your prayers William and, and just how nice you are to me I said that's nothing at all Joy. That, that's just the way I want to be that kind of person I want to be a person that is contagious Amen. I want to be a person that when I get around other people, they are affected for the positive. Can you say amen? Oh, you see, church, we are going to affect people one way or the other. Our attitudes are very 
contagious. Can you say amen? Oh, you see, Brother Dave, he is very, very contagious. Amen. I can pick up Brother Dave on Sunday mornings for church. Amen. Oh, and sure enough, I may have had a rough morning getting the kids around for church. I may have had crying babies or sick babies the night before or this or that. But whenever Brother Dave gets in there, everybody starts smiling. Amen. Why? Because his attitude is contagious. Amen. Oh, I remember whenever... Wayne, he, he wasn't here last Sunday morning and Sunday night and, and on Wednesday after having that procedure. Oh, but it, it's just a little different when Wayne is not here. Amen. He's contagious. Amen. Oh, da, da, Denise, you weren't here for, for a few services because of your wrong kind. Of, but I'll tell you, those children were affected because you weren't here. Oh, they ate good and they loved it, but they were asking, where is Sister Denise. Why? Because you're contagious. Amen. Say, I'm contagious this morning. Amen. I'm contagious. I want people to be affected positively when they get around me. Amen. You ever come up to some... Or I'll share this. It just came to my mind from yesterday. Aaron was telling me about this individual who went to my father's church for years since a, a, a newborn baby he was. And, oh, and uh, this other family at my dad's church would invite this uh, young man to come over to their house and to eat. But this young man had left the church, got mad at my dad, got mad at the whole church, and just started blabbing gossip, things that weren't true, just tearing the church down oh, uh, around other people. But this family that still goes to dad's church invited this young man over to their house. They were friends with them. And they told Aaron the other day, they said, we got to the point where we could no longer invite that young man over to our house because all he ever did was affect us. He would start tearing down brother so-and-so, start tearing down the pastor, start tearing down the piano player, the preacher's wife, amen. Started tearing down everything and everything that he didn't like or agree with about that church. You see, they had to cut off some relationship with them because that young man had become so contagious, amen. But it wasn't in a positive way. It was in an awful way. I don't want people to say, there's William, I better stay away from him because he makes me not as good as I ought to be. But I want to be somebody that whenever I get around you, you can say, man, I feel a little more encouragement. I feel a little more strength. I feel a little more faith. I think God's going to move on my behalf. That's the type of, of contagiousness that I want to have. I don't want to affect people negatively, but I want to affect people positively through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Contagious. Amen. We are contagious. You know, at our house, the kids, maybe it's Nathan. He's a lot like me. He never gets sick. Nathan will get a little runny nose. He comes home. He gets it from school. Got it contacted from somebody at school. He comes home. And sure enough, Nathan's contagious. Baby Caden will get it. Then Josiah will get it. Then Michaela will get it. Why? Because that sickness that he had is contagious. Amen. Oh, you see, it's just like our attitudes are. Amen. Say, Lord, help my attitude today. Amen. Lord, help Brother William's attitude today. I want to affect people positively and not negatively. Can you say amen? amen. Number two today. I want to tell you that our negativity is very contagious. Amen. Say my negativity. negativity. Pastor's negativity. Amen. Is contagious. Amen. Now I've lost over 50 pounds now. And I, amen, amen. Oh, Randy, there you go. Give me the golf clap. <laughs> flowers in their hand. And they, you know. <laughs> but I used to have a wardrobe, a closet filled with my favorite brand of shirts. They're called Chaps. You know, Chaps shirts. Now, I'm not talking about the biker pants, but the brand is called Chaps. 
And I think it's the cheaper version of, uh, of, uh, of Ralph Lauren or something, but it's just, just a nice shirt. It's a good shirt. And I had a whole bunch of those shirts. And a lot of times I'd get them on sale. If it's not on sale, those shirts run about anywhere from $50 to $60. But a lot of times I'd get them on sale for like $20, $25. And I was excited about that. And, but uh, I had a wardrobe, a closet full of these 2X chaps shirts. They're button-up shirts. I, I can wear them with blue jeans. I can wear them with a the suit. I mean, that's, that's what I like about them. And uh, so anyway... One day, Miranda came up to me and she said, Honey, you need to clean your closet out. I said, What do you mean? She said, You've got all these shirts in there that don't fit you, and you can't fit your big boy shirts in there now. Amen. I couldn't fit my 3 and 4X shirts in there. Amen. Because my 2X shirts were taking up all my space. Amen. But you know what? I listened to Miranda. Sometimes it ain't always a good idea. Amen. I got those shirts. Amen. I posted them on Facebook. I thought maybe I can sell my shirts. You know, you sell clothes at a yard sale. Amen. Maybe I can sell them online. Well, a uh, uh, Hispanic man that was, uh, he, he, he didn't look like he was 2X, but he, I guess he was. One day he come over to, ch uh, to our house and it was after church one morning and he was wearing dress clothes. And I could tell he and his family had come from church and uh, he hardly spoke any English, but his wife came up to the door along with him and they said, we're here to buy your shirts. And I brought out uh, about five or six nice shirts and, and I showed them to the people and they bought all of them. They called me a week later, said, do you have any more dress clothes for for sale. I said, matter of fact, I do have a whole bunch of. Long story short, I ended up selling all these beautiful, nice, handsome looking shirts. I sold all my nice shirts that I paid hundreds of dollars for throughout the year. Sold all those shirts for around fifty or sixty dollars, I believe. I could only afford to buy one three X shirt after that. Amen. Oh, but you see, I'm trying to tell you that Miranda's negativity was contained just to me. Amen. She said, you ain't never going to get back into those shirts. Amen. I've seen how much you like ice cream. I've seen how much you like cake and candy and cookies. You ain't going to fit back into those, baby. She said, I love you. Whether you're 100 pounds, I love you. Whether you're 400 pounds. Amen. How I many know that's a good wife? Amen. Oh, but I'll tell you, she said, you're just taking up space, so I got rid of her. But you see, her negativity, her discouragement, if you will, it caused me to do something that if I wouldn't have done, I'd still have all those shirts today. But her negativity was contagious unto me. The Bible says this, Proverbs 4, 23 through 24, keep thy heart, keep your heart, amen, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and preserve and perverse lips put far from thee. Our negativity is contagious. Can you say amen? Oh, I know, church, that there have been visions that have died because somebody's negativity was contagious. What are you talking about, vision? I'm talking about church vision, ministry vision that were killed because of negativity. How many ministries died because somebody's negativity was contagious? There was a young girl that I knew of, and she was about 12, 10, maybe 12 years old. I don't really remember, but I remember I was told the story that she had got up at a small church uh, to sing a, a special song, you know. And this little girl's just up there. She was scared to death already. Even though it's a small church, her heart is pounding, her knees are, are buckling and shaking. And she's just thinking, here I am. I'm going to sing in front of all these people. She gets up there. Oh, and at first, whenever she started singing, her voice was a little crackly. She was scared. She was nervous. Oh, but after a little bit of time during the song, about halfway through, she got comfortable and just really started singing the song for Jesus. Amen. Oh, but after church, somebody with a negative spirit came up to that little girl, the young woman, the young girl, and said, oh, you did a great song, but I want to tell you about what you did wrong. Whenever you first started singing, you were certain my ears. 
year. You were so high pitched. I thought you were never going to get a hold of that song. You see, it was that negative, contagious negative attitude that was working in that woman. And you know what that negativity did to that little girl? She never again sang again. Never again got up to sing a song because she was so affected by that contagious negative attitude. Our attitudes are contagious and they can even be deadly contagious. Come on. Come on. Amen. They can kill people's dreams. They can kill what people want to do for God through our negativity. Amen. Oh, I didn't just pick up a guitar one day and just, oh, I knew how to play. There were a lot of times when I was hurting my own ears, let alone everybody else's. Amen. But I didn't allow negativity to stop me from learning. Amen. I'll tell you, I went back and heard a message that I first preached at this church. See, Brother Charlie, he's been here about two weeks after it started. And so we got videos from back then. I mean, talk about green, what is it, green behind the ears or something? Boy, wet behind the ears, that's what it was. I was pre I looked like a ping pong ball. I mean, I was just going back and forth up here. There wasn't no such thing as teaching. It was all shouting, amen. Shouting and yelling and screaming, amen. I was just excited, praise the Lord. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, but I looked at those old videos and I said, oh my goodness, that kind of embarrassing, amen. I didn't have much to say, but I was saying it with a shout, amen. Oh, I knew I was called. That's one thing for sure, amen. Oh, but I'm telling you, though, this day, I didn't allow negativity to keep me from doing what God called me to do. Amen. And you can't allow negativity to keep you from doing what you ought to do. Amen. Amen. You all have gifts. Amen. I'll tell you, I'm so proud of Sister Denise using her gift and Sister Shauna using her gift to feed these kids. I'm proud of them for that. Amen. That's a, an awesome ministry. Amen. Yes, it is. And they need our encouragement. Amen. Whenever Randy sings a special song, he needs our encouragement. Amen. Whenever I preach a message or Sister Mary preaches a message, Sister Miranda's going to be preaching pretty soon on a Sunday night. But after they are done, I'm not fishing for compliments after today. Now, I understand that. Amen. Oh, but I'm telling you, sometimes it's good to to let other people know, hey, it was a blessing today. You're, you're ministering to me. Thank you. Amen. We need to not be negative one towards another, but be positive. Our attitudes, our negativity is contagious. Amen. Oh, Sister Michaela, she'll get up from time to time. And when she was like real, real little, she could get up, she wanted to shy on her body. She could do that. You know, saying, but now it's Kayla. You want to sing before church? She's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I give her the mic. She's like, you know, she starts sucking her thumb. You know, oh, but uh, I I've got to continue to encourage her. Amen. I don't want shyness to rob her from being used by God. Amen. I've got to encourage her. You've got to encourage her. I've got to encourage you. You've got to encourage me. We're all on the same team, ain't we? Come on now, we're all on the same team. Don't allow oh, a bad attitude or negativity to affect somebody else. Can you say amen? Yeah. Number three, the last thing today. I want to tell you that our joy is contagious. Amen. Anybody got joy today? Amen. Amen. Sean and Dave do. Amen. No, we all got joy today, huh? Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Oh, our joy is contagious. Proverbs 17, 22 says this. A merry, happy, and joyful, a merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drive the bones. Amen. A merry, a happy, a joyful heart, a merry heart does good like a medicine. Last Sunday night, somebody came in this church and their joy was extremely
contagious. Brother Randy, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Who is it? Brother, uh, Brother Patrick. Brother Patrick. <laughs> Amen. How do I know he's contagious? Even Brother Randy knew that. Amen. Contagious. Amen. Our, he's our African brother. That's where he's from. Amen. Now, I don't know where I'm, but he's from Africa. But he, uh, he just comes in. I've never seen anyone with a bigger smile than Brother Patrick has. And he just comes in and he goes up to every single person, young, old, baby, middle-aged, and he puts his arm around them and gives them a hug. Amen. And it ain't awkward like it is for some people to do that. <laughs> oh, but uh, he comes in and his joy is contagious. Amen. Whenever he walks in, especially last Sunday night, y'all always got a smile on your face, but Brother Patrick walked in, and I saw some of you turn around, and you saw me, you turned around, and I just saw this look on your face, just, you know. And it, the same thing for me, too. Why? It's just because his joy is contagious. And you know what Brother Patrick told me? He said, he said, he said, Pastor William, see, Brother Patrick, do you realize he's uh, in his 60s? I mean, wow. he's in his 60s. He has an orphanage somewhere in Africa. He's got all kinds of kids that he has adopted. And uh, he's just, a lot of things I didn't know about, but he's really lived just an amazing life. But uh, I'm looking forward to hearing him preach for us in, in November. But uh, Brother Patrick was just, he showed me a video. And it's just like the videos that I see from our missionary in Malawi. Has these African people, little, little guys, little boys, little girls, like old, old, you know, gray-haired folk and middle age, all ages, and they're up there and dancing. I mean, I'm not talking like, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you know, the white people dance. I'm talking about the black people dance. Hey, I mean, they are just dancing and staring at it. I saw one of them. It was the, the bishop of the church and his wife. He even took his wife by the hand and they're just dancing together. Hey, man. And it wasn't weird looking. Hey, oh, they're just dancing. Then he left her. He grabbed a little child. They just started holding hands. You, you know, just grabbing each other, dancing around. Oh, but what was it? They were all smiling. Hey, man. They didn't have any electricity. They didn't have any padded pews or padded chairs to sit on. They didn't have a PA. They didn't have any drums. They didn't have anything. All they had was a little tambourine and maybe a bongo. But they were making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I'm telling you, Brother Patrick was telling me then. He said one thing that is different in African churches than there are American churches. He says the African church doesn't have to have the conditions to be right to begin to pray the Lord. Lord, I'm telling you, oh, what was it? Their joy is so contagious that it gets all over those around them, all over around them. And may you and I be like those African brothers and sisters. May there be such a joy and a love for God that when other people get around them, they are affected. Amen. Because they're so contagious. Amen. Say, Lord, I want to be contagious. Amen. I want to be contagious. Amen. I remember sometimes we pick up Sister Lorraine for church and on the way to church, on the way to pick up Lorraine, I'd be telling Sister Miranda sometimes, I'd be like, you know, sometimes we'd be, we'd leave late or something and we hit traffic on the 99 to go and get Lorraine. And I'm just telling Miranda, this is just great. <laughs> I'm on my way to pick up Sister Lorraine for church. And on, if you're getting on the 99 from, from Waldell, from airport, you have to go over like a little bridge, kind of where Brother Charlie used to work, that, that refinery, there's a little bridge that overlooks that refinery. And we were stuck on that bridge. I'm just telling Miranda, isn't this great? That's all right. I said, Lord, it's okay. We're just being late. That's fine. <laughs> you know, just, I guess I was just a little stressed or something. But we get there, we pick up Sister Lorraine, and 
She comes out slow as can be. <laughs> Man. She got her purse. She got her Bible. She's got her dinner. Amen. She's got about 30 or 40 napkins. Amen. They're all different colors. So they're from different restaurants. Amen. But she's got them all. Amen. And she brings them in to the bring, brings them outside. And whenever I see her walking out, sometimes I just start laughing. Not, not in a mean way, but I just start laughing. I said, there's Sister Lorraine. I said, she got her napkins. She got her Bible. She's got her clothes packed in case she never goes home. Amen. She just got her whole world in that walker, in that little basket. Amen. And, but what did it do when I saw her? It was contagious. Amen. I quit worrying about, man, I'm, I'm going to be late. I thought, man, get there when we get there. Amen. I had to pick up my buddy. Amen. I had to pick up my friend. And she was contagious. Amen. You, you church, you're contagious. Amen. Amen. And I don't want you going out buying a mask this afternoon. Amen. You stay contagious. Amen. As long as it's a good contagious. Amen. I don't want to be negative. Amen. I, I don't want my attitude to be contagious. But I, I want to be contagious in a good way where people are like, you know what? I, I came to church. I've had a hard week. It was rough. But man, what's <coughs> Once I started praising the Lord and worshiping God, and once I heard the word of God, man, I, I'm not the same as when I came in here. I, that burden that I had has been lifted. That, man, I, I was looking for peace, and I, I found peace today in the house. So that's the contagiousness that I'm talking about. That's the way I want to be. Can you say amen? Amen. Brother Randy, would you, would you come to the piano today, brother? <laughs> Hallelujah. Church, let's just lift up our hands today unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we love you. Lord, I, I've preached today what you've laid up on my heart. Lord, I, I didn't even plan on preaching this uh, this morning, but Lord, I know it was the right word for, for such a time as this. Lord, you have dealt with me so much this past week about my attitude. And Lord, I know right now that you're dealing with all the hearts and lives of this church, every last one of us, every single one of us, because all of us, Lord, have things we can improve on. Every one of us, Lord. There's no one in here that, that doesn't need improvement. We all need improvement, Lord. We may not see it, but you see it. Lord, I ask you, Father, that you would deal with every single one of our hearts. If there is something within us, God, that is affecting other people in a negative way, I pray, Lord, that we would take care of that today by confessing it to you and you alone, God. That we would confess it to you, Jesus. And we would just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I don't want to be contagious in a bad way. I want to be contagious in a positive way. Amen. Church, let's all find a place to pray today. Say, Lord, just help me to affect people for the better. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we are contagious. Whether we like it or not, help us to affect people in a good way. In Jesus' name. Lord, touch Brother Randy. In Jesus' name, Lord. God, just minister to him. Strengthen him. Bless him, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. We want to be contagious, Lord, in a good way. In Jesus' name. Lord, God, touch Caden. Minister to him, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, God, touch Sister Malrose today, God. Touch Brother Wayne today. In Jesus' name. Lord, we want to affect people in a positive way. Lord God, touch Brother Nate today. We want to be contagious, Lord. We want to affect people, Lord, in, in a good way, in the right way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, may other people be lifted up by our presence. May other people be strengthened, touched, and encouraged, Lord, through just simply being around us. Lord, may other people find the peace, Lord, the, the strength, God, the faith, the searching for it, Lord God, by simply being with us, talking with us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you would heal. Heal us, Lord. Heal us, Lord, from being contagious in a negative way. Oh, God, heal me, Lord. I don't want people's dreams, visions to die, Lord, because I was negative. I want to be contagious, Lord. I want to be someone that builds up and not 
tears down. Jesus Christ is Lord for He is Lord He is Lord and He has risen from Exodus 15 tonight, the Song of Moses. Now, I'm not talking about the book of Revelation because we talked about the Song of Moses a, a few weeks ago, but because uh, that's what some of the tribulation saints are going to be singing, the Song of Moses. But uh, we're going to be preaching about that song tonight, the Song of Moses, and uh, it'll strengthen you. It, it, it'll it'll build your faith tonight. Amen. And, uh, and uh, you just have a wonderful afternoon. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. I ask you, Lord, that you just be with all of us as we go our separate ways. Bring us back tonight at 5 o'clock, ready to worship and to praise your name. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. God bless you all. Love you. Thanks for the negative words, brother.